Hello, and welcome to SciShow Talk Show. The day on SciShow, where we talk to interesting people about interesting things. Today, we're talking to Vanessa Hill from BrainCraft and from Australia. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing well. I haven't come all the way no. from Australia to be here. I was just in Vancouver, so it's not oh. very far at all. Uh, it's hard to get here from anywhere. It's true. <laughs> it took all day. <laughs> <laughs> so BrainCraft is a YouTube channel about psychology, about the mind, about how to be better, maybe? Be yeah. less terrible of yes. a person? <laughs> how do you help me be less bad? Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. So I think we have a similarity where we've been on YouTube for a little while. Mm -hmm. You longer than me. My channel started in 2013. Okay. So that is coming up to six years now. And uh, I have made a bit of a switch lately. I've switched tracks. So when I started, I was all about telling fun science stories, which mm -hmm. you do very well on one, a uh, few of the 30 shows that you have. <laughs> you look tired when I say that. Yeah. <laughs> I feel this look comes over. Yeah. It's a glaze where you're like, oh gosh. So I, I just started telling stories that I found interesting about neuroscience, about biology, about the brain. Um, I made a documentary about genetics. You know, I did, I did a lot of things. And uh, at the beginning of this year, I did a bit of soul searching. My funding situation changed for my channel. And I thought, well, what, what is 2019 going to look like for me? Which is, okay. it's kind of an exciting thought and a terrifying thought sure. all at once. Who likes mm -hmm. planning? Nobody likes planning. Right. But I have kind of switched tracks to focus on development, personal mm -hmm. and professional development, right. which is uh, sometimes a boring thing that you do at work that you have to do at work. Yeah, there's every these year. courses. Or some overconfident person comes in and and with a whiteboard and tells you to think outside the box. Exactly, think more creatively. Right. Yeah. And so, it's, what's your background? I studied psychology. Yeah. Uh, then I did a master's in communication while I was working for the government. So I worked for the government for Australia's National Science Agency mm -hmm. for six years, uh, mostly in education and outreach, and then also in their media right. team. Teaching yeah. people. All Teaching over the people place. all about science, yeah. all different types of science. Yeah. So yeah. It's my background. And then I became a YouTuber. Right. The rest is history. And then, and, and <laughs> well, look then at other, me now. Then in the future, other things will happen uh, yeah. too. It's interesting yeah. to know like where people come from and like that sometimes yeah. when you come into a science communication, like it's not like this is necessarily the first thing we all did. Like I was yeah, writing about science. I find that it a long, is long time before YouTube for a existed. lot of new YouTubers. Yeah. Like I meet a lot of new, newer YouTubers who are super successful. They've been doing it for like one right. or two years or something and have millions of subscribers. Yeah. And I kind of think of them as maybe the third wave of educational YouTubers. Yeah. Yeah. But the majority of them were just straight out of college, started right. a channel, and they were fans of yours and Henry and mm -hmm. Destin, Derek's, and everyone yeah. um, since the beginning of yeah. YouTube, you have a different perspective on things when you've been in the workforce and in different mm -hmm. working environments, and then you become a YouTuber. Yeah. I think it's different. There's a piece that's like, you know, what is the thing that is just interesting and is going to get the click? Mm -hmm. And then like, at a certain point, you also realize that you're like providing a service that people are benefiting from yeah. and feel like, how could I lean into that? Mm -hmm. Like, instead of just like, you know, entertainment, interesting informational stuff, is there a way I can make people's lives better with this? Yeah, so I launched a Patreon for my channel in January, and I was really taken aback by the responses that people mm. sent me when they were pledging and all of that, saying that um, they hadn't supported a channel before, but they found my content helpful. Mm. And it seemed, maybe it seems naive, except I was reading this thinking you found it helpful. Like I thought it was just a fun story. Like yeah. I didn't think that people were going to apply something that they learned on YouTube to their everyday life. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's why people watch Crash Course and things, isn't yeah. it? Like to, to learn and to revise, but I think more for a school setting rather than an everyday life yes. setting. Right. So that made me think like, I really want to lean into this. Like I need to lean into this because I was unknowingly providing that for people mm -hmm. in probably a really roundabout way because I don't think the conclusions of my video or the stories were 
clear cut to help people sure. learn how to break bad habits or be less passive aggressive or how to how to manage jealousy in their everyday life. Mm-hmm. But I just had like one or two tips at the end of this six minute narrative about jealousy or right. passive aggression or something like that. So I'm kind of like flipping my videos around to right. have this really practical advice in them that is still grounded in science but can mm-hmm. be really helpful. Right. Professional development, personal development, it's also something that it's really easy for sort of pseudoscience-y yeah. stuff to creep into. Oftentimes what, what we see is like some researcher somewhere finds this and then like it goes through the mm-hmm. filters of the universe and the sort of charlatan self-help person finds the message that they can pull out of it to yeah. make people think that, you know, all you have to do is one thing and you'll be a millionaire or whatever. Mm-hmm. How do you navigate that? How do you avoid that? Um, and also, how do you compete with that? Yeah, I think, I mean, it's definitely hard to compete with because a lot of people are drawn to those kinds of conclusions. But right. I think like the audience that I have on Braincraft and that you have on SciShow as well are people who want to see evidence, you know? Like they mm-hmm. want to know how things have played out in the real world, what kind of proof you have that something works. Yeah. Um, even if it's not concrete, uh, you know, a at least a study or a couple of studies or, or a case study mm-hmm. of something and how it's worked. So I always start by finding something in, in the original research papers and then building out from there. Right. And I mean, a lot of it is me reading books that have been written by researchers, research groups, psychologists, people mm-hmm. like that, and they often form their own conclusions. So I guess you have to like tread carefully when you're recommending some of those things mm-hmm. or at least try them first or find a correlation where other people have recommended the same thing where it becomes like a thing rather right. than someone's opinion. Um, but I think it's difficult on YouTube. I mean, it's difficult for the audience as well, like how they find sure. content that is reliable rather than some person's opinion. It's YouTube. Yeah. Anybody can <laughs> upload anything to this That's place. That's the beauty of it and then <laughs> yeah. the curse of yeah. trying to search for something. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is there an added responsibility that you think comes with that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I had trouble when, at the beginning of the year, where I was like, right, I want to do this. I want to be like a scientific Oprah, you know? <laughs> like, I, I, I want to help people and, yeah. and try and... Um, coach them to use science in their lives in in these ways yeah. by using results of of studies and research and stuff like that. But like I'm not a therapist or a clinical psychologist. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not a a life coach, even though a life coach isn't a very scientific person. Right. But yeah. you know, I don't have experience coaching mm-hmm. people. I'm a teacher and an educator, so I really spent a lot of time like finding the spot where I sat in the middle mm-hmm. of all of that. And I spoke to friends who are clinical psychologists right. and people who are coaches and things like that. And I think it, it comes back to the topics that I cover. So I I love making videos on communication and career and and basic relationship stuff, Mm -hmm. um, social interaction, and not mental health. Like, I don't have expertise in that, so I'm not making videos on depression or or other things like that because there are a lot of really qualified YouTubers who are doing a great job there, and, like, that's not my area. Not necessarily a thing that, like, you need to bring to yourself to bear on. Yeah, yeah, mm. exactly. So I think that kind of narrowing in on a certain mm-hmm. range of topics helps in that way. Always when we're trying to uh, to have like practical advice for mm-hmm. people, it's so hard to find things, in psychology specifically, it's going to work for some people and not work for everybody. Exactly. How do you talk yeah. about that and how do you yeah. tease out what, what the most useful things are. Yeah, I guess when I am when I'm writing videos I start with review papers. So mm-hmm. in in certain areas of psychology or any science really when enough people have written something about a certain topic someone will do a big review of right. everything and that's a really good way to get a quick insight into what the consensus is on mm-hmm. a certain topic. So I kind of start with that to find out what the consensus is and like where to go from there. Mm-hmm. Um, I suppose I maybe I haven't found a good way yet to talk about 
how things will work for some people and won't for others. Like I do yeah. mention that from time to time, but it's, I haven't like made like a you video need on a that. Tagline. That's yeah. Like, Should we come up with that yeah. right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like it's something that you, you have to say over and over again. Like that mm. if this doesn't work for you, then like that you're just one of the people it doesn't work for. What's my next video? <laughs> <laughs> there will be future. If that tips. doesn't work for you, just that's keep going. So, yeah, and because I think sometimes with with this kind of stuff, people can like if you try it for a month and mm -hmm. it's not working for you, then you're like, "What's wrong with me?" Yeah, because there, there's there's science that says that this works, but mm -hmm. it, it's science that says that it works better than not doing it. Yeah, not that it works for a hundred percent of the people a hundred percent of the time. Mm -hmm. That's just the vagaries of the human brain. And it yeah. might, you know, like the the it might work for you, you know, in January 2019, and not in January 2020. Like, yeah, I think um, meta cognition isn't always a good thing. Thinking about why you're thinking about things and thinking about why you're behaving a certain way—it's exhausting, right? Yeah. So it can get circular. It can get yeah, spiraled really fast. Yeah. Exactly. So I think personally, like I try and kind of focus on one aspect of myself and like work on that over time or kind of write down like five goals before the end of the year and, and mm. things that I want to work on. One is that I'm a chronic over apologizer. Mm. I say sorry all of the time. Like every time uh, today that yeah. I blow my nose, I just apologize to everyone in the whole room. And everybody's or, like, yes, we have all had colds. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, or if I, you know, I'm holding up the line on the plane, putting my bag yeah. in the overhead compartment, I'm like, sorry, 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 sorry. sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, so sorry. yeah, and I, I do that about a lot of things. Like, yeah. if somebody bumps into Canadian. me, well, I think the Australian is is the Commonwealth influence as well, <laughs> right? Where in certain cultures you just apologize yeah. a lot more than than in others. Yeah, um, I mean, ultimately. What's the harm, though? So I think that, well, there are a few things that are harmful about it, I think. One right. is that it lessens the value of saying sorry. Mm. If you're over-apologizing when you actually do something that you should apologize You need a whole for. other word for that. Yes, exactly. So I think that's part of it. And then I think it also lowers your self-esteem. Mm. Yeah. So I think if you're saying sorry all the time, you're bringing yourself down mm -hmm. ultimately it's at least a signal that like you are considering other people mm. much more highly than you're considering yourself yeah so i like think if somebody trying... knocks into you and you apologize to them uh, what that's are you a, doing that's a sign what are you doing that, like... yeah <laughs> so i have been trying to stop over yeah. apologizing um i actually a fantastic one in emails was i got this email plugin that underlines every time you say sorry in an email mm -hmm. or apology or some kind of word well i'll tell you what yeah it would have underlined every first sentence of every email I send, which begins, sorry for the delay. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Perhaps thank you for your patience it would be a better okay. way of phrasing thank, it. That sounds lovely. Thanks for your patience. Yeah, yeah. Turn to, yeah it's them. But, exactly. But are they patient? I have no idea. If they haven't, if they haven't followed up, then yeah. they have demonstrated patience. Or at least ignorance. Yeah. Or complete <laughs> <Forgetfulness>. disregard. <laughs> my existence. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, but I, I've been trying to to stop saying sorry, like just saying nothing in those situations, mm -hmm. or say thank you instead. Right. Like swapping out thank you or okay or just silence yeah. seems to work in every situation where you over-apologize. Okay, good. Life tips. What do you else? Life tips. What's next? <laughs> uh, so I have an animated series coming out over summer. I think the first episode is coming out in July. Yes. Uh, Over apologizing is the first episode, so perhaps skip to the second. I just spoiled everything <laughs> for you. <laughs> uh, that that focuses on some of these like everyday yeah. personal development tips. Awesome. Yeah. Well, do you want to see if we can give any life tips to some non-humans? <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Maybe they'll give tips to us. I think there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to learn. Yeah. 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 What is this? <laughs> it has the same harness as my dog. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's a good harness. It's a, this is a guinea pig. This is a guinea yeah, pig. Yeah, that is not a guinea pig. <laughs> what is it? It's like a deer rabbit. Yeah. I mean, that's what the, the, the <laughs> that is the most common response we get. Deer okay. rabbit kangaroo. Throw that in there I was there thinking too. the coloring yeah. is like a kangaroo. So um, this is a guinea pig. 
It's making a her lot of noise. Her name is Pumpkin, and this is a Patagonian Cavi or Patagonian Mara. And she's fine. She, she'll just, she'll what, she's very what sweet. What is this related to? Guinea pigs. They are both this? in the Cavi family. I yes. I was a guinea pig. They, I mean, wow. it's very close. It's yeah, like a guinea like pig miniature horse rabbit. <laughs> Oh, God. Um, so this is Pumpkin and this is Cayenne, and here I'm going to give you some treats. Okay. If she ever comes close to you here, we can just move this closer. Wow. She can walk on over there if she wants to. All right, so she is actually not, I mean, she looks kind of big, especially compared to little Pumpkin here, but she's not full grown. She is about really? seven weeks old. Oh, your baby. Yeah, and she is going to get much larger. Here, you want to give does that she to have Pumpkin rabbit, so she get rabbit so... teeth? What do her, her teeth okay, look like? Okay, so... She has rodent teeth. So okay. guinea pigs, all cavies, so guinea pigs and Patagonian cavies, they are rodents. So they have two ever-growing incisors on the top and the bottom. Rabbits have four okay. teeth on the top. Um, while they are ever-growing, they're not considered rodents. Here, you want to walk around? Oh, sorry. Ooh. Whoa. Yeah. I, love that, I love that noise. Got it? There you weep, go. Weep, weep, weep. Yes. And that is what I wanted to talk about today. She communicates really well verbally and that's kind of unusual a lot of animals do a ton of nonverbal communication yeah. but cavies these guys do a ton of verbal as well I mean they don't have very many um, muscles in their face so they don't have a lot of facial expressions so they can't be like I'm angry and um, yeah I'm excited so they do floppy that faces like nothing it's right. just it's just staring so that that's a week that's excitement. She's looking for food. Mm -hmm. and um, Such a high Tess frequency. Like, yeah. Right? So higher frequency usually means more excitement. It's just a heightened sense of energy, I guess, like behind it. Um, mm. Lower usually either means calmer or if it's like a forceful low, it means Whoa. aggression. Honey. So, <laughs> she's just like, I don't know what I'm doing. I just want food. <laughs> She's still learning her body. Just, <laughs> what a little baby. And do they like cohabitate? Yeah, so that's the fun part. So they're completely different species, but they actually communicate similarly. Mm. So both ah, of them have the nip. excited week that you can hear. Both yeah. of them have like a low rumble, where it's like a grunty rumble, like I'm content and happy. And then they both have the fear scream. And if they get mad, both of them will chat. They'll like do this little chattering of their teeth, and they can both growl as well. So it's just it's really cool. I know they're very closely related, but mm -hmm. they're different species, and they look so different. Different, yeah. but they communicate very similarly. So yes, these two can cohabitate without any major issues going on. Oh, you found more. Yeah. Like, oh, can I feed her? Yes, absolutely. It's got a very okay. soft noise. You can just put it into your hand and she'll eat it right out of your hand. Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Tickles. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Very gentle. Hey, I like how she hey. just like does this little steppy right. step. Like like it. That is elbows. that is where she looks like a kangaroo, where she's just balancing on those back. Legs. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then yeah. her little tail. She's yeah, like a little so weird. It's like a rabbit tail. Thing. It's Don't jump down there. No, no. <laughs> there you go. So they have these little pads on the back of their feet there, their hawks right there. And mm -hmm. as she gets older, that will build the skin will build up more and more and she'll get like a big callus over there, back there. Oh. And she does. She does that like little <laughs> so walk around on little walkie. Yeah. Is thing. that I guess that's the whole thing is the foot. Yep. Like, yep. So that's her heel. So it looks yeah. like it's yeah. like her like her elbow or whatever, but no, that's her heel. Mm -hmm. That's like dog's yeah. feet are like that yeah. as yep. well. And then the, yep, the bottom and then that she walks on her toes mostly. Right. So that grunty thing, that repetitive grunt, is like what she does when she's close to her pals or her family. Oh. She would do the constant, that noise constantly if she was uh -huh. following behind her mom or her dad walking hey. around. Whoa, so just, careful, like, honey. Give careful. it all to me. She looks like a give wallaby from the, from the front. She does, but they don't. The way that she's jumping up. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, when she's yeah. standing up like that, yeah. yeah. But she's missing like... Yeah, the the yes, back end. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but the ears and everything, I know. Hi, friend. What so, was her name again? Her name's Cayenne. Hi, Cayenne. Cayenne Hippo. born at Animal Wonders? <laughs> she wasn't. So we got her as a companion to our larger Patagonian cavi. He's eight years old, and his name is Chili Pepper. Right, right. Oh. And so Cayenne is going to be his companion. Originally, Does that mean they're going to mate? Well, 
It would have, but uh -huh. we sterilized chili pepper. We are not okay. a breeding facility. Okay. So, so they will. They are monogamous in the wild. They do communal wow. living, but they're monogamous, and it's totally on the male to keep the relationship going. Mm. Like the female's like, you know, I'm just doing my thing, and the guy is like. <laughs> Peeing around her, Hi, pooping welcome. around her, peeing on her, rubbing. Oh, well, that's one he way does, to like, do it. It's called yeah. anal digging, and he like will just like, anal rub digging? his bum everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If she is receptive, it's funny. Like he'll he'll pee on her, and then if she's receptive. She'll like just pee right in his face. Like, I also like, pee on yes! you. Yes, yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah, she's content to just poop. Mm -hmm. What makes a guinea pig mean? Because I've had. I've met like mean guinea pigs when I was a kid. My friends always had like biters. So what would make them, what I would say is not mean. What I would say is they're being defensive. Yeah. And so they are not happy with whatever you are doing to them and they're saying stop it. Right. Um, so that would mean they are scared. Pumpkin doesn't seem to be scared. <laughs> Pumpkin. Pumpkin's very content. Pumpkin is just, <laughs> she just does. Cayenne on the other hand. She does. She's spreading is out hungry? slowly, just taking up more and more space like a guinea pig puddle. <laughs> Beautiful, warm, fuzzy puddle. She's wonderful. She does not feel afraid at all. She doesn't feel like she has to defend herself. Mm -hmm. She's had plenty of food, so she is, yeah, absolutely content. Who bred you like this? She's a mutt. But she's got the this long hair, and uh, it's a little bit short right now. But it will grow a couple inches longer on the side. And it almost looks like this, like you can do it. Like that. You can do it. She can, you can jump down. Oh, bye bye. What's the lifespan? Of Not cayenne? very in the wild. Two mm -hmm. to four years. A cavy? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, That's quite there's a, long. There's Don't a you lot think? of predators no. out there. Mm -hmm. Well, in captivity, they can live twelve to fifteen years. Wow. So okay. it's all predator based. Once yeah. they just get. A little bit slower mm -hmm. than the like the fastest predator, a predator in their prime, mm. they're gonna become food. So when do they start breeding? So, so they cute, start breeding though. at about ten months. They can have their first litter in the wild. So yep. yep. Just before just before and a year old. How many babies in a litter? Um one to four. Okay. Well yeah. that's quite small. In yeah. the wild they, they just have one litter. They breed once a year. In captivity they can have up to four litters. Oh wow. Wow. Yeah. Think. And then these guys as well, they can have they can have up to five babies generally. And when they're younger, they'll have less babies and then they get older and they have more. Guinea pigs lifespan in the wild. You don't really find this. This is a domestic yeah. breed. Um, but they also have a very short lifespan, two to three years in the wild. Um, but in captivity, they can, they can live about six to eight years. It's like they're normal. Um, so rodents generally aren't very long-lived animals. Mm -hmm. But definitely, they're prey animals, so in captivity, keeping right. being kept safe if they're given the right diet. Yeah. Both of their digestive systems are pretty sensitive. She's like, yes. Oh, yeah. oh the good noises. <laughs> so much communication, right? That's a, such a very sweet noise. She's like, yes, please, more of this. So this is a purr. I mean, it sounds like a purr, but it's, it's a purr or a grunt. But they can communicate with each other. Yeah. And that's can, what makes them and special. And us. And us. That's the cool thing is yeah. like we can. You understand her vocalization. Yeah. But I think you guys could too. If, if you just, yeah. if you walked into a room and she was like, wee, 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 like you'd be like, oh, yeah. yay. I get it. I <laughs> like, get it. Yeah. yeah. And if she was like, meh. Yeah. Like you'd be like, uh -huh, yeah, I get that too. My Labradoodle has quite an extensive range of vocalizations. Yeah. Like they, something like this, but just a little bit lower pitched. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. A little hummy purr thing. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. So getting back to why we have cayenne, she's a com companion for chili pepper, our bigger Patagonian cavy. But originally we had him just partnered with guinea pigs and they got along really well mm -hmm. but then we rescued a couple more do you want to get up and move around um we rescued a couple more guinea pigs and then they really started just interacting with each other oh. and he was kind of left out so we're like oh you need you need that socialization you need that so that is why we ended up getting cayenne here did you start ignoring chili pepper she's like i got my own friends yeah that's not cool <laughs> You can't just ditch a friend, <laughs> especially when it's cool, big friends. These two actually get along oh. really well. Okay, good. They do. Do yeah. they ever cuddle? Hi. Um, they sleep. They sleep next to just, each other. Yeah, just lie to me. Tell me so, they cuddle. 
They groom each other. Oh. Yeah, so that's cute. Yes. Yeah. You want, okay, okay, okay. You're so you do your thing. Oh, she just loves her treats so much. Like that, that, was my, that was my cow thing. Can you? She turns in a circle. If she feels, oh, she got distracted. We trade, we trade here. Do you already know how to turn in a circle? She does, right here. Girl. Oh, what else she are you going to learn how to do? Up. She knows how to stand up. Let's see if we can focus. Oh, good girl. Whoa. <laughs> You're only seven months old. Seven weeks. Seven weeks. What? Yeah. Seven week old baby can't even move. <laughs> yeah. These guys can get up and run within about an hour of being born. Yeah, wow. Their eyes and ears are open. They got to because I there's so even, many predators. I can imagine. Yeah. Trying to get after them. I can barely I walk know, an hour after waking up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these guys can jump six feet in the air. But they really wow. want to. So she just little, little hops. Just believe these guys. They are so closely related. Yeah. They are both rodents. They have four toes on the front and three toes on the back. They're both considered in the cavi caviidae family. Mm -hmm. And Look at the difference between yeah. them, though. She's like on stilts, and she's got like her her legs are like an inch long. Yeah, but she does have the same like like walk on the toes, but also yep. the the heels are. Yep, similar Hi. feet, but they Hi, can't. They don't have that super long extension. These guys can jump right. six feet, like I said, and they can run about f up to forty miles an hour. Wow! So these guys are absolute sprinters, and they need to get away. These guys are short, like scuttlers. And they'll just and go and hide forward. under uh, a bush or something right. like that. Pumpkin, thank you for sitting on my lap. I'm very warm. <laughs> it's a very warm little animal. Yes. <laughs> uh, and it's really great to meet you as well. It was wonderful. Crayon. What a curious yeah. little cavy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like such so many different kinds of animals yeah, put together. Yeah. But she's just who she, she is. She's very special. Ooh. She's like food. <laughs> like you boot me. That's all <laughs> she cares about. <laughs> If you want to see what Jessie's up to, you can find her on YouTube at youtube.com slash animalwondersmontana, where we can see all of the animals that Jessie takes care of here, or at Animal Wonders. Yeah. And Vanessa is at Braincraft on YouTube and at Nessie Hill on Twitter, and you can see all the things that she's up to. Thank you for watching, <laughs> hanging out with us here on SciShow Talk Show. I'm just going to go cuddle alone now. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>